growing up, we, we both grew up in um, Christian or Catholic backgrounds and were participated in church, but never really felt like I didn't get a lot from it. And then there was a period in, our, in my life um, and Ken's life where we, I separated away from the church because of something that happened. Probably the point where I struggled was when my mom died and we reached out to her church, to our church, um, for support and didn't feel like we were getting that, the support that we needed. So I was angry um, and I pushed back and I stopped going to church. Finally now after what, 10 years just about, 10 years this April since your mom died, mm -hmm. um, we got the courage to, to come and um, are very blessed that we picked City Light as our, our first one because if we had bad experiences with that, maybe it'd be another 10 years before we found another church. And uh, we feel like it's been a home since we got here. Day one. From day one with the people out in the parking lot greeting you and welcoming you there, it was, it was a definite took down with some of the anxiety of going to a new church and wondering what's gonna happen inside here kind of thing. And um, just been a beautiful place to be since and we're glad we're a part of it. Well, we were going to a uh... Uh, another church that we also like uh, but then uh, after three years of going there we realized that we were not growing spiritual spiritually as we we were wanting to so we were looking for a new church it was funny because once we were in a park and I remember my husband playing with the kids and I was sitting on a bench and uh, I was praying because it was a Saturday and I was a little bit sad because I was thinking where are we going to go tomorrow because we don't have a church. And then these two guys walked by and they started setting up a camera besides me and uh, my husband likes cameras a lot. Yeah, so, so, I, so I just saw the cameras and the setup and I was like, hey, I'm going to ask them a little bit of what they're doing. And actually it was Jason that they were going to do like a, a video. And we start chatting and he introduced himself as the pastor of the church and it was okay well, why not give it a try so the next the next day we went to the church right and it was that's yeah. where it started well i think it, it's it's been very positive uh for us for sure right as my wife said we were we were trying to find a a, a church that would give us more growth spiritually and we found that for sure we like uh the the message is something we can relate to that we can really find something we can apply in our day-to-day -day life right i think it's very clear objective message and, and I really enjoy it right we, we like going to church and the kids like it also because also that was something I think we were lacking a better um, system for our kids right we want it to be a whole family uh, experience and for sure we like the fact that now we, we have that and it's been very very uh, very fun uh, experience in case it's very fun also so it makes it easy to to go and listen uh, the, the word of, of God right? so it's really nice, really nice I graduated college uh, got a job up here and we moved um, all within a matter of like four weeks and got married. And got married. <laughs> yeah. We, um, well, when we were moving up here, we were just like looking for churches nearby. So just, you know, a quick internet search. And we um, decided we were gonna like look, like give each church a few weeks. And we had like a list of churches that we wanted to try and City Light was just the first one on our list. We went the first time and just decided that that's where we wanted to stay. We liked it a lot and it seemed to really fit with, you know, what we were looking for in a church and so it just ended up being the place for us. It was really cool how that yeah. all worked out. When we got to City Light, week one, uh, we came, week two, we found out about growth track, week three, we were in growth track and by the, we started the last week of January, by the end of February, we were serving. And it just instantly, I think, felt like a church family. Everybody there wants to get to know you. They want to know what's going on in your lives and what your story is. And I know that was like a, a real answer, a real answered prayer for me uh, because our last church just was so, I guess, there was, a, there was a wall to get past to try to get into the church. And, to see a, an area of the parking lot that I could get involved in and see myself having a role in the church was really cool. And yes. It all comes back to family. Yeah, it definitely given us a sense of, like a, a sense of belonging here yeah. and making Rochester our home and making this a community for us to belong in and not just come and be a part of once a week. Let's give it up, you guys. Oh, so awesome. 
So great, so great, so great. Well, hey, uh, a couple of things today. Being that it's our third anniversary today, we're going to do something a little special for everybody. And so as you leave today, we have coffee mugs for everybody, a City Light coffee mug for everybody here today. And on there, it says a couple of the sayings you might have heard me say from the pulpit a few times. Our staff thought it'd be funny to put things that I say on the coffee mug. And so this is my favorite. It just says, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So, so you can grab one of these when you leave today. It's just our way of saying thank you for being with us. Whether you've been here for three minutes or three years, we love you. And we're just so honored that you have joined us in this whole journey. And then I just wanted to uh, reiterate, next week we start what I think is my favorite series of the entire year. We do this annually here at our church. It's called At the movies. And if you've never been a part of At the Movies, basically what we do is we take uh, some great movies that you maybe have seen in the theaters, and then I pull out spiritual truths from them. And so we watch some of the movie, you watch some of me, and it's powerful and it's so amazing uh, to see it. And so we have these invite cards that you can hand out to your family and friends and invite people, coworkers. And let me just say that this is probably the best series to invite somebody to. If, you, if you've got somebody in your life, who has been resistant to church, but they love the movies, they might come to this. You just tell them, we're gonna go to the movies. Where? It's at the movies. We're going at the, we're going at the movies. That's where we're gonna go. And then you just come to church. It'll be great. You know, it's be wonderful. They won't even know. We got, we're gonna have popcorn and candy, and we're gonna get you all hyped up on sugar. It's gonna be awesome. And then the second week, February 11th, for those of you who got kids, we are having Captain America, Spider-Man, and Anna and Elsa from the Frozen movie, they're gonna be here to take pictures with all the kids and, and have fun. And your kids can dress up that day. They can come all dressed up in their superhero outfits. It's okay. We make it fun to go to church. So, so dress them up, their favorite princess outfits, whatever you wanna do. It's great. You can dress up if you want. I don't mind. It's okay. And so it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm just so, so excited for that. But man, three years as a church. Wow, that's just amazing. Come on. That's just so fun. You know, when, when, we, um, when we started this church three years ago, um, you know, this day three years ago, I was freaking out. Like, I was scared to death. I was like, oh my goodness, are we sure we're supposed to do this? You know, my wife and I were youth pastors for a long time, and we felt like God called us to start a life-giving church in the area. And so we're like, oh my goodness. And so we just trusted God, and we went out, and we quit our, I quit my job as a youth pastor. And, and a lot of you know the story. I went out, and I just said, okay, God, here we go. And, and we convinced about 65 people to be our launch team to, to go with us and open the church. And then we had to raise like $180,000 in like six months to buy everything that you see around here. And I'm like, okay, God, you got to do a miracle here. And it happened. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And, and I'm like, okay, here we go. That, that Sunday's coming. And, and, and I, was, I, I was so nervous that first Sunday. I mean, I was somewhere in the back puking somewhere in a bucket. Sorry if that's gross, but that, that, was, that was truth. And so I was just freaking out. And, and I was worried and I was like what if what, what if nobody comes like what if nobody shows up I mean we're we're launching a new church in January in Michigan like people say you don't do that that's like church planting 101 you don't open a new church in a cold weather state in the winter and what if we had a snowstorm what if it, we had an ice storm what if it was 80 degrees in Michigan because that stuff happens and everyone's at the beach you know what 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 are we supposed to do like I was freaking out you know and then and then I started thinking about what if people do show up Oh my goodness, you know, I'm like, oh, what if they don't like it? What if they don't like the music? What if they don't like me? And I'm just, I'm freaking out that day. And the verse that I held on to that entire season in the church planting phase was Ephesians 3.20. And it says this, now to him, that's God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. That, that we just believe that over the last three years as a, as a church, that we have seen immeasurably more. 
We, like, like we had an idea, maybe this is what it would be like, but to, to see you today and to see your faces and to see the people who have been coming over the last few years, it blows our mind about what God has done in such a short time. It's so amazing, like it's, it's just immeasurably more. We can't even believe it, of what God has done. And we just believe that the best is yet to come, that we're just getting started, that, that God is not done. He's like, he's just, he's just ramping us up for what he's gonna do in this place. And so I'm just so excited. I just can't believe it. And, and I just know that, that, man, the future is bright at our church. And, and, and there's going to be, yeah, you can clap. It's okay. The future is bright. And, and, and every Sunday when I, when I stand up here I, and I look out at your faces, and I remember a lot of you when you first came, or maybe you made a decision for Jesus when you were here, or maybe when you joined the team or took growth track. I remember, and it's so amazing to see what God's done. And, and, I, like, and I get to stand up here every week and just, I'm in awe of what God has done. And, and, and I hope you come to a place where you say, wow, God is definitely moving in this place and that you've experienced him in a fresh, in real way. I always like to take our anniversary service to kind of give you the numbers and show you a little bit, talk to you a little bit about what God has done in, this, in, the, in, in our church the prior year. And so last year alone, last year we, we averaged in here uh, 233 people on a Sunday morning service. We averaged 233 people. But since we went to two services, we average 293 people every Sunday morning. Come on, somebody. You can put your hands together. That's good. That's amazing. When I talk to church planters that are at our same phase of life, they're like, well, how many people? How, what's going on? It's amazing to see what God's doing here. And what, what I love, what you can really clap for is this next one. Uh, last year, we saw 193 people make a decision for Jesus Christ right here in this room, right with you. That is so amazing. And then this is what I really love. In the last three years, our three-year total, we have seen 539 people make a decision for Jesus. Come on, church, let's put our hands together. That's, that's so good. That's so amazing to see. But last year, we had 42 different city groups that met in our spring, uh, summer, and fall semesters. People gathering together outside of this place, developing relationships. It was just so great to see our city groups. We had 55 people take our growth track and where they began to discover how God's uniquely made them into a place where eventually they get on the team. And, and right now, we have 150 people on what we call our dream team. These are the volunteers you see people serve. Can we put our hands together for our amazing dream team? These people are serving. It is so amazing. And I, and I want to take a minute and just say thank you to all of you who are serving on the dream team. Uh, we could not do this without you. It is amazing to see that your hard work, your passion, that you're, you're coming to the understanding. It's like, man, we're making a difference in our community. We're, we're making a difference in people's lives. And yeah, we're getting up early or we're tearing down or we're loving on somebody's babies right now or we're running a sound or playing in the band or making coffee. Everything you see here, we have amazing team members who are doing that. And, and I just believe that we may not see this side of heaven, the impact we're making, but I believe when we get to heaven and, 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 the, and the pearly gates open up, man, Jesus is going to be standing there saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Look at all the people that were impacted because you said yes. You said yes to the vision, the call of God on that church. You showed up and you were a part of it. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of our amazing dream teamers. It is just amazing. We, 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 I say this all the time. This church is not about a pastor. It's not about one family. This is an entire team working together doing as much as we can for Jesus while we still got breath in our lungs. Come on, somebody. That's what we're all about. So you can clap one more time. That's good. You can clap a lot of times. It's okay. And so it's so good. It's so good to see uh, uh, what God is doing. But I always like to take two in our anniversary service to talk a little bit of vision and remind you know, us of what the vision that God has planted inside of us to do. And you know, when, we, when we came to Rochester Hills, we didn't come to this area because Rochester Hills needed another church. You know, we came to this area with a dream in our heart that just basically said, I bet you there's a lot of people in our community, a lot of people in our world today that doesn't think the church is for them anymore. 
anymore, that thinks maybe the church isn't relevant to their life, have maybe given up on church and maybe are far from God and just like, you know what? I just don't think that I can relate or I will be accepted at a church anymore. And so we said, you know, what if we created a church that just was, was helping people know that, that God still loves them, God is still pursuing their life and, and, and that there's hope and there's a place in the local church for them. They don't have to stand at a distance anymore, but they can be welcomed into this place. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you've gone through, that you will be welcomed here. And there's a place for you where you can belong in this church. And so, but we had the questions, we had the doubts, we had the worry. We're like, can God still do it today? Can, can God still make a huge impact in today's culture? And, and where more and more people are attending church less and where millennials are kind of d- debating whether God is real and whether they should even attempt to go to church. And so we said, can we really, really make a difference in our community? Can God still do it? And, and the verse, another verse that I, I hung on to, and, and really this is my verse. Like, like when I read the Bible, when I come to this verse, I feel like this is, this is why I'm on the planet. Like I, I got a verse. Like I encourage you, get a verse where you read it and you're like, this is me, this is my life. And, and this is what God said to me, and this is, this is my verse, Acts 26, and it says this. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. That's why city light, just so y'all know. Okay, there it is. And from the power of Satan to God, so they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. We said we want to create a place for people. That doesn't matter where they're at, what they're, what, what's going on in their life. They can have a place of belonging and they can be transformed. They can encounter the living God. But then we also said, you know, we also want to create a church for people that believe in God, but maybe this, have this, this thought in their heart and in their mind that there's got to be more to this, this God, this Christian relationship that I'm currently experiencing. There's got to be more to this than what I'm really experiencing and walking through in my life. And so we said, we want to create a church that, that whenever you walk into this place, no matter what you're going through, no matter what's, what your week look like, no matter what your month look like, no matter what's going on in your marriage, no matter what's going on in your work, that you can walk into this place and that you can experience God. Like I'm talking about that you can experience his presence where you're like, I can't believe that, that I just I felt that. And I can't believe the preacher was talking. I felt like he was talking right to me today. I, I, when worship was playing, I just, I, my hair stood up on my arms. What is that all about? You know, like where you could experience the presence of God where, where you say, I don't, I don't know. I don't know all the questions. I don't know all the answers, but man, I met with God today. Like we don't even call our church services services. We call them worship experiences because we believe with all of our heart that you can experience God, that you can walk into this place and experience him. I love what 1 Corinthians says, and it kind of it says it for me uh, in this whole journey with us. It says this, it says, when I, this is Apostle Paul. He says, when I first came to you, now let me, let me personalize it. When I first came to Rochester Hills, <laughs> dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words or, or impressive wisdom because I was from Auburn Hills and I didn't have any, okay? So I just came. It's just me. I'm from a broken home. I, I just grew up in the area. I, I just came and, and I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you about God's secret plan, that God has a plan for each and every single one of our lives, He says, for I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid, and trembling, and, and truer words have never been spoken. Three years ago, I was, I was trembling. I was nervous. I was like, oh my goodness, please like me. You know, I was struggling. And it says, but, but, but rather... He goes, he goes, but my, my, my message, he goes, and my preaching were very plain. And, and I want you to always know that when I preach up here, it may be plain, but I want you to come to a place where you say, I can apply that to my life tomorrow. Like, I don't, have, I don't want you to come in here and be like, wow, that was deep. I don't know what he's talking about, but that was deep, meaning I don't know what he's talking about. I'm confused. And so I want you to come into this place and say, wow, I get it. And I can apply that into my life on Monday. And I can do it Tuesday and I can put it in my life Thursday. And I can actually go forward in what God has for my life. He says this, he goes, rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so you would not trust in human wisdom, but in the power of 
God. That in the power of God, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up here, maybe I'll make you laugh sometimes, maybe I'll tell you a story and, and be the catalyst for some change in your life. But it's not about me, it's about the power of God that you can experience every single time you come in here. That the Bible says where two or more are gathered in his name, that he is here in the midst of us. So that, that God is here to, to, to show you how much he loves you, to embrace you right where you're at, to help you get through whatever you're struggling with and to, to, to love on you in a way that you can experience in a tangible way, his love. And we said, that's what we wanna do. We wanna help people do that. And we believe with all of our heart that, that you can experience that power if you let us help you and take you on a journey of what we believe is God's secret plan for your life. And, and our vision for our church has stayed the same ever since we opened three years ago. And if you're taking notes today, you can just jot this down. And maybe you've heard it before because I love talking vision and reminding people what God wants to do in your life. And we said we see in scripture is very clear that the number one thing that God wants to do in all of our lives is he wants us to know God. He wants us to know him. And I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about here. Where we can, we can know God up here. We can know all the Bible stories. I know about Christmas and Easter. I know about some, some high stories that maybe you've heard at a time in, in your life. But I'm talking about God wants you to know him here, intimately. Where you're saying, I don't, I, I don't know what else. I don't know all the answers, like I said before. But I know that 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 there is a God in heaven. And, and he, is, he has revealed himself to me. He's spoken to me. I've experienced him. And we want to get everybody to a place that you come where you, where you truly know God. Where you really know him. And then it, once you begin to know God, we want to, number two, help you find freedom. We want to help you find freedom. What I'm talking about is finding freedom from your yesterdays. We all can have baggage. We can all can have hurts and wounds and things that we carry with us every single day, every single week. And we come into church and we don't feel good enough. We feel shame. We feel, we feel like, I'm not good. Why am I even here today? I shouldn't be here. I don't deserve to be here. We can have all these things that are holding us back from God's best in our life. And we just believe that that is not God's plan for you. We want, we want, we want you to experience freedom. That you don't have to walk away, walk around with the baggage anymore. You don't have to walk around with things holding you back, but you can truly find freedom from your yesterdays. That God wants you to experience life and life to the fullest, Scripture says. And so one of the ways we do that is through our small groups. We believe with all of our heart that real life change happens in the context of relationships. Sunday mornings are amazing. We want you to come and, and be inspired and encouraged. But small groups get to a place where you begin to develop relationships. You get to develop a relationship with people around you. And eventually you get to a place where you begin to take the mask off. And you say, this is what I'm really going through. This is what I'm really struggling with. And when you do that, it's amazing things happen. You begin to find freedom. You begin to find healing from your past. Scripture talks about it in James. It says, therefore, confess your sins, not just to God, but to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. We want you to find freedom. We don't want you to walk around every day thinking I'm not good enough and I'm addicted and I got this baggage and I got all this stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We want you to find freedom from those, those moments of your life where you can begin to see your future better. And that's what number three is all about that we wanna help people do. We want them to come to a place where they discover their purpose. Once you get yesterday kind of cleaned and cleared away, you begin to see your future. And that every single one of us in this place today, God has a unique and special plan for your life. That you're not here by random chance. You're not here just because your mom and dad had a baby one day. You know, it, it, you're here because God has a unique plan for your life. When you showed up on the planet, God didn't say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with this one? He said, no, 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 I've got a unique plan. The Bible says he knit you together in your mother's womb. Like, like he has a specific plan for your life. And when you begin to see that, that God wants to use me, that I'm not here just to pay bills and, and to go to work and have some kids and then retire one day, that there's greater things in store for you, begins to, you begin to come alive as a person. And then you get to the number four step where you finally come to a place where you are making a difference 
in this world. Like God wants you to make a difference in this world for him. He doesn't want you just to go throughout your day and say, okay, here we go, it's another day, no big deal. I just wanna endure. Like, like I just believe that, that, that you're not here to, for, to just survive, you're here for significance. Like you're not here just for survival, you're here for great significance on this planet. And I wanna get you to believe that because that's what God's word says. He wants to get you to a place where you're seeing that man, I can make a difference in the life of somebody else. I can come to a church and, and find out how God's made me and then they allow me to go do something about it. They allow me to use my gifts, my talents, my abilities to, to, to use it for the kingdom of God. And I believe with all of my heart when we begin to do these things, we begin to operate in these things, we, we begin to really know God. We begin to find freedom from our yesterday. Understand that we have purpose and that going out and making a difference, it will change your life completely. You, will, you, you may have a job doing something and you may still have some problems and issues in life, but when you put your head down on the pillow every single night, you will know that I, I made a difference. I'm making, I, had a, I, mean, I made a difference in somebody's life. I'm not here just by chance. But somebody maybe is in heaven today because I decided to say yes to that church and I decided to help set up so, so, so people could come and, and experience God. I decided to, to love on some babies and some kids in the, in the nursery and the kids area so, so a mom and a dad could come and sit in here and experience the presence of God. I, I'm back there running sound because I want people to hear Pastor Jason preach God word in a great way. Come on, somebody. But you're saying, I made a difference today. I made a cup of coffee to somebody. When they walked in to the church, they didn't feel like, it was, they, they didn't expect me to come or didn't want me to hear. They were excited that I was here. I mean, we got donuts today. Come on, somebody. That's, thank you, Jesus, for donuts. But you can make a great, great significance around here and in this world. You don't have to just go through life feeling that you have no significance. Let us help you find what God's uniquely designed you to do and giving you a platform to go do it. That's what we believe. And so at our third year anniversary, you know, this is, this is really to celebrate changed lives. Like, like this is really all about change. Like this is why we do what we do. We don't do this just to have a, have a church, have a big church, have a, you know, more, more, more people, more people, you know, so I have a job. That's not why we do this thing. I do this because I want to reach one person at a time. I want one person at a time to experience God in a fresh and new way and allow him to transform them from the inside out. That they could experience God like, like they never have before. And, and their eyes would be open to see that the God of this universe is madly in love with them. And I was reading in the Bible and I was like thinking to myself, well, how does the Bible celebrate changed lives? Like, how does the Bible do it? Like, I, like, like, what do they do back then? And I love this verse because when I read it, I'm like, oh, duh, exactly. This is how they celebrate changed life. Acts 2 says, those who accepted his message were baptized. They got to a place where they were water baptized. After they believed in their heart that, that, that God raised Jesus from the dead and they experienced transformation, they got baptized right after that. I love it. It says about 3,000 that it, it were added to their number that day. Can you imagine the water after 3,000 people got baptized? Some of y'all are worried about like one or two. I mean, thankfully, I think they were in a river, so it's all good to them. But it was cold. We don't have cold water. We got nice lukewarm water. And, uh, but I was thinking about this, like, wow. You know, what they did 2,000 years ago and what we do today is that we help people get baptized. We, 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 we baptize them in water to, to as a great uh, moment in their life saying, well, I'm a changed life, that, that God has done something inside of me. And I tell everybody, now listen, baptism doesn't save you. Baptism is an expression that we give to God because he saved us. And so we do that and we say, God, I'm, I'm changed. I'm not the way I was anymore. And that's why we do the water because I'm, I once this way and then I went in and I'm coming out a different. And that's what baptism is all about. And, and so what I want to do in the next few minutes that I want to encourage you that if you've never been water baptized or you have never had a significant baptism experience it would be our honor next month when we do our baptism service next month that you would say, I I'm gonna go all in with God. Like I I I've been on a fringe a little bit. I believe, I love God, 
but I've been on, I, I want to go all in with him. 2018 is still January. It's still New Year's. Come on. We're going all in with God this year. And I'm saying, you know, my life has been changed. My life has been transformed. I'm not how I used to be. And I'm going to declare that, man, I, man, God is doing a work inside of my life. So I just want to encourage you with three quick little things if you're taking notes today. The first one is this, is that baptism follows the example set by Jesus. That that Jesus, when he was on earth, he was baptized. He he didn't need to get baptized. He didn't even need to get saved. I mean, he's the son of God. I mean, he can do whatever he wants. But he said, you know, I'm going to get baptized because I'm never going to ask people to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. And so he was baptized in the Jordan River in Israel. And then he says this, this to us. He says, therefore, City Light Church, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I've had people say to me, well, pastor, does, do I really need to do that? Do I really need to get baptized? You know, I mean, I, I believe, but you know, I'm, I'm saved. I've given my life to Jesus, but I really need to get baptized. And I always tell them, listen, you know, when, when Jesus says something in the scriptures, whether I like it or agree with it, I've learned to obey it. Like, like, like I've learned that there is revelation and understanding on the other side of my obedience. I don't need to like it. I don't need to, oh, I don't need to really understand it. I just say, Jesus, if you said it, then I know it must be truth. I know you are never going to lead me to something that's going to hurt me. And so, Jesus, if this is what I'm supposed to do, then I trust you fully, and, and I'm going to trust and obey, and I'm stepping over the line. And a lot of times after you step over the line of obedience and do what Jesus has called you to do, all of a sudden your eyes begin to open up, and you go, oh, Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it now why you wanted me to do this. Because wow, it's an experience that I, man, I, I'll, I'll have for the rest of my life. This is amazing. When you begin to trust God and, and obey him at his word, man, it, he will take you on a journey that you will never, ever regret. Number two, if you're taking notes, baptism demonstrates a changed life. It demonstrates a changed life. It's saying that, you know, man, my, uh, uh, I'm changed. This isn't about joining a church. This isn't about joining a denomination. This is about saying, I am a changed life. This is a symbol of my life not being what it used to be, but it's completely different. First Peter 3 says, in baptism, we show that we have been saved from death and doom by the resurrection of Christ. Not because our bodies are washed clean by the water. It's not just taking a bath. He goes, but because in being baptized, we are turning to God and asking him to cleanse our hearts from sin. I love it. It's demonstrating I'm not that way anymore. Man, I've encountered the living God and and I'm changed. I'm, I'm different now. And then number three, baptism declares my commitment publicly. It declares my, my, my commitment to God publicly. You know, some people say, well, pastor, you know, my faith is private. I don't know about all this baptism in front of people stuff. I don't know. Like, I don't want my hair to get messed up, and I got makeup, and it'll run, and I don't want to do that. So, and I always tell people, I say, listen, you know, your, your, your decision with Jesus is private, but your faith is never supposed to be private. The, the, the scripture talks about this, and, and that's why we do it as a church. We, when we invite people to give their life to Jesus at the end of every single one of our services, we, we never call you down to the front. We never make you do anything and embarrass you. We, make you. we have you make a decision right where you're at because it's a private decision. But scripture talks about so many times that eventually you, 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 we've got to take our faith and this relationship with God publicly saying, I belong to him now. I I call baptism the wedding band of Christianity. Like like, like this wedding band does not make me married. So if I took it off, it's not like I'm not married anymore. Oh my goodness. You know, it's not like that. So, so the, but baptism, what it does is it shows, but it shows everybody that I belong to somebody. Like this ring shows people that I'm belong to Nicole. And so step off, you know, come on. And so y'all weren't expecting that. All right. I got you. But baptism is this moment where you say, I belong to Jesus. I, I'm no longer belonging to the other things that I was, was, was addicted to, uh, that had me captive, to the life that I used to live, the things that were just tearing me on the inside. Uh, I'm no longer uh, identifying with that anymore. I identify with Jesus. I belong to him now. 
And people have asked me before, well, pastor, you know, I was baptized when I was younger. Do I really need to do that again? And, and I tell people, I, I was baptized when I was younger too. When I, was, when I was 12 years old, I was in a great little church, traditional church, and, and they had a rule that you had to be 12 years of age to get baptized. And when you were 12, you get baptized, and then you could be a member of the church, and then you could take communion. So I'm like, all right, cool. I want some cookies and some juice, and so come on. But really, I was like, I want to go to hell. And so I was 12, but I wasn't dumb. You know, come on, somebody. I was like, all right, I want to do whatever I need to do. And so I had to take these classes, you know, really early in the morning. I mean, I don't think Jesus was awake yet. And I had to take these classes, and I don't even remember what the guy was talking about. And I'm just like, can I just get baptized? Can I just, you just dunk me in water, please? And so finally, you know, it came the day where I got baptized. It was this great moment for my family and everybody. But I didn't meet God that day. I just kind of really met my church a little bit better. And so after that moment of baptism, I just kind of continued to live my life the way I had been living. And as I got older and in my teenage years, I went off the deep end. I did some crazy things that I'm never proud of, and I was so far from God. Maybe I was a good church member, but I wasn't a, I wasn't a follower of Jesus. And then when I was 17 years of age, I, I walked into a church really like ours, and I found a bunch of people that were passionately, you know, loving Jesus, and I was like, what are these freaks doing, you know? And, and as I began to experience the presence of God, all of a sudden I realized that God was real, that God was still relevant for my life, that God was speaking to me. He would, I mean, the preacher was up there saying things that I was like, Oh my goodness, he's talking right to me today. Like, like, did somebody call him? Somebody send him a, a letter? We didn't have email back then. It was like, what's, what's going on? And, and I said, I'm giving my life to Jesus because I was so far away. And when I came and I gave my life back to Jesus, I mean, I'm talking transformed. I'm talking new creation like the Bible says. I'm not talking upgraded version. I'm talking new from the inside out. I was a changed person because I experienced God. And then I got baptized again. Because I said, listen, the first one was great. It was more of like a dedication maybe to the Lord. But now I had an encounter with Jesus. I believed for myself. And I was like, I, I, I'm transformed now. And I need to get baptized again because now I really understand what I'm doing here today. And so maybe there's a lot of you in this place today that maybe when you were little, you were baptized or you were, you were christened as a baby or something like that. And I think that is all beautiful. I think that is wonderful. I think that is great, but it's not necessarily biblical. Uh, it's not unbiblical. I wouldn't say don't do it or anything like that. But there are 27 baptisms recorded in the Bible, and all of them are after a decision with Jesus. So they came and they encountered Jesus. Their life changed them, and then they were baptized, not the other way around. And so I want to encourage you today, if you are in this place today, and you say, you know what? I've never been baptized before, or I've, I've never had a significant baptism experience, like where I know that I'm different now. I know that I'm changed. Maybe I was baptized when I was, I was little, but I didn't know what I was doing. But now as I stand here as an adult, I understand that, that God has done a work inside of me. And I want to declare publicly now that I'm with God and that he's transformed me. And I'm, I'm going to follow what Jesus did. And I want to get baptized again. If that's you in this place, it would be our honor. It would be my honor to, to, to lead you in that and to baptize you next month at our, our baptism service right after one of our worship experiences. We give you time to change and you bring clothes. Don't worry. We'll give you all that information. You don't have to worry about it. But if that's you today and you're saying, okay, pastor, I want to go all in with Jesus this year. I want to go all in in my relationship with God. I'm, uh, I've been sitting on the fringe for a little while. I believe but I really want to go all in this year. If that's you, man, I'd love for you to just simply grab your smartphone or, or your dumb phone, whatever you got in your hand. Uh, you can pull out your phone right now and you can text the two words, all in, all in, to 248-714-0606. And you can sign up for baptism right where you're at. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything right now today where we're going out and baptizing people right now. But it's, you can sign up right now and say, all right, pastor, I'm ready to go all in this year. 
because I, God's done a work inside of me. I'm different than I used to be. I've experienced the living God, the God of this universe. And I just know if Jesus says I need to do this, then I'm ready to take the next step to go all in with him. I wanna show you one last video that we have today about some people that have really experienced some changed lives. Go ahead, roll it, guys. Before I started going to City Light, I actually moved back here from Los Angeles and I went through a really rough breakup and I was trying to sort of like fill this void in my life. I felt like I was trying to just date people and all, like meet new people and it, it didn't feel like it was clicking anywhere. And I had a friend of mine just say, hey, I'm going to this church called City Light. Me and my wife are checking it out. Why don't you come with and we'll just see what it's all about. And I hadn't been to church in years and I sort of grew up having faith, but it was very much my own way. Um, I thought, you know, the Bible says this, but if it was written today, it would probably say this. Uh, so it was just kind of my own style of faith. But when I went to City Light, it was a series called uh, From This Day Forward. And it was a message all about just starting fresh and that you have a blank slate with God that you can sort of start new. And it was just the craziest thing because Pastor Jason started talking about, you know, maybe some of you are here and you just got out of a bad relationship. And I was like, that's a little dead on. He goes, maybe some of you are trying to fill this void in your life and you know, you just, you don't feel fulfilled. And I was like, did somebody call and tell his pastor that I was, you know, that I was coming today? And at the end of the service, I just remember he said, like, if you want to give your life to God, and if you want to sort of see this change in your life, just raise your hand. And I about broke the sound barrier, but mine up. It was the craziest thing because after that, it was like this immediate sense of community and belonging and everything in my life just improved. There were like no more random panic attacks. This like horrible like depression that I was feeling just felt lifted. It felt like so many weights had just been lifted off of me. My performance at work improved. I started meeting all these new friends, joined a small group, and it's such a crazy shift to see that, you know, a couple years ago, uh, probably around this time a couple years ago, I was sort of just floating through and trying to figure everything out on my own. And now I have this incredible base of friends and really a family uh, at City Light. Um, for me, life was confusing. Um, not knowing where to go, I was sort of lost. I grew up in a really strict church, and with me being in a really strict church, it wasn't me. Everything I did was wrong, and I just didn't know where to go, and I've been hurt so many times. Before City Light, I was the same way. I didn't know which way to go or what to believe in, to be honest. Um, before I found City Light Church, my family, well, my mom's side was raised, she was raised Jewish, but my dad's side was Catholic. So it was kind of a stuck place to where I should believe and what should I believe in, but uh, when I went with Kate to City Light Church, I kind of felt welcome the past couple of months since i've been there um i've been going through some rough time and the pastor's always been there willing to talk to me and be there and to listen to me and anything i have to say he takes the time out and i never felt so comfortable and around anybody like in a religion like that and that's why i come to city church i feel comfortable i found city light through a friend chelsea she told me we should come and to this day, I will never forget the message Pastor Jason preached. Um, it was about forgiveness, about after being hurt and filled with anger. And I just remember not even 20 minutes, not even 10 minutes into it, I start crying because I literally felt the Holy Spirit on me saying, this anger from everyone that's hurt you, you just gotta let it go. You gotta forgive them. And I look over at my friend and she's crying and she looks at me and she goes, this is the worst message I could bring to you on your first Sunday. And I said, this is the best message. And that's when I knew City Light was gonna be my home. I've never experienced where people are just like, where's Matthew? I just wanna see him and that's my son. And I'm just like, oh, he's at his dance today or something. But like, they actually care enough and remember. I mean, I can't imagine how many kids come and go in the program but for them to remember my son and remember he's part of me was like a huge thing. They're just so loving. It doesn't matter who you are. They'll give you a hug. They'll shake your hand. They always ask questions about what's going on and that's family.